Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. First of all, you guys know the drill. If you guys please smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it. You guys can leave a comment down below. I don't care what it is, it super helps the channel out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on the earth. We're back in the shop. It's dark and early. I just wanted to give you guys another little update of what we got going on. We did end up getting the Hyundai parts painted. So those are ready to go. We're just awaiting our customer to confirm their appointment. We'll go ahead and do an R&R &R on the bumper, the fender, the headlamp. We got a wheel liner. We got a new grill. We got a bumper bracket. We got a bunch of new pieces here. And uh, once they confirm an appointment, we'll have them drop it off. We'll go ahead and get that stuff switched out. I stayed a little bit late last night. I was probably running about uh, 45 minutes late and yeah, getting out of here. But uh, this thing came out awesome, guys. You can see here, we ended up popping off the rocker panel. We did a repair in this area. So we blended out our rocker panel with a brand new bumper cover here. Now, a lot of these grills are glued in, these mesh grills. So we went ahead and just left them in. The customer already had this bumper installed previously just black so he already had a lot of his grills popped in so we did the best we can masking it off and doing a very clean job this thing came out awesome guys now this color is a tri-stage i don't know if you guys can see the flake in there or not but it's a very hard to see we lay our epoxy primer down then we go ahead and lay our color blending agent down and then we go ahead and blend out our solid blue base and then after that's blended out then we start laying out our pearl base and we have to blend that as well. So there's ultimately about nine coats of paint. If you include the two coats of clear that we did, um, three coats of base, uh, the three coats of pearl and the color blender as well, plus the sealer. So there's quite a bit of paint to get this effect. We went ahead and repaired this fender, repaired the door, blended into this door. So blending means you can kind of see our color on the tape. Now you can see how it slowly transitions into nothing because if we took our new color and painted out this entire door and stopped right there you could potentially see a difference between this door and that door being butted up right against each other but since we kind of create an illusion by tricking the eye into seeing one color um, you cannot see the blend so that's why blending is important now we ended up blending this pillar as well and same thing you can see the color slowly transitions now what was difficult about this like i said was that it was a tri-stage paint job meaning we actually had two colors to get this color the solid blue base and the pearl effect so if you start doing your pearl effect before your solid blue base is blended out then you're gonna have to go backwards back to the blue and that's not gonna be good you have to get the right amount of pearl and it has to transition just right Brand new hood, we went ahead and cut in the underneath. With the hinges, we reinstalled everything. We went ahead and filled a couple rock chips on this fender. We did a little repair on this corner of this A-pillar. We blended up a little higher because there was a big fat rock chip up here. So I wanted to go a little bit higher. You can see here, our color, we kind of hit it right into this corner. And all of this is just clear coat. This just gets cleared. And then same thing as you wrap around this corner, we had a repair on this dog leg and this rear door. And you can see we colored out most of that rear door. It's a giveaway on the tape. And we did the best we can with coming into this corner uh, to stay away from our bumper cover. And you can kind of see just a little bit of overspray on the tape here. But we really needed to stay away from this bumper cover so we don't have a butt match there. But this is a very small, short quarter panel. If you guys look at that, the quarter panel is actually shorter than the door. So there wasn't a lot of room here but I think we did just great. We did pretty much keep the color below this body line. There might've been a little bit of coming up over the body line for a nice gradual transition. But what this does is create an illusion to the eye to seeing one color. Now we went ahead and prepped out this front door. Um, I could have potentially stayed in that rear door, but like I said, our repair area was right here, which only left me this much room to put our sealer, our base and our pearl it's only left me a couple inches for clear and you can see here how close I really was. So opening up this door for blend, um, yes, it used a little more clear, took a little more time, but it potentially saved us in the long run from having to repaint the door the next day or something being that it didn't match or something. So we went ahead and just make a good decision on getting this door prepped out, which obviously caused us to have to refinish the entire side. 
Now I could have colored out the entire side as well, but I like to keep things as simple as possible if I can. Um, there was no reason to go ahead and color out that entire side. Uh, it just uses more paint and uh, honestly, we achieved really good blends. So we blended there. We blended this front corner. We blended here. We blended the other A pillar and the other door. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six blends essentially. Honestly guys, it came out awesome, awesome, awesome. I was able to take a little base coat on a brush and brush touch a couple rock chips that he had uh, down low as well that were like white. So now you can't see him at all. So this thing's gonna look absolutely awesome. Same thing with the rocker panel. We decided just to pop that off. We didn't wanna mask that on the vehicle. For one, it gets really low and it's hard to spray the underneath. But two, uh, you wouldn't be able to paint the jam. So you'd have some sort of blemish probably line here. So we went ahead and just took it off, mounted it on this and just scuffed it all up and went ahead and blended this as well. So today we are gonna go ahead and get this thing unmasked. We're gonna get the door handles installed, the door panels back on. We'll get the mirrors on. We'll go ahead and get the headlamp, the front bumper reinstalled. We'll get the rocker panel back on. And uh, we'll probably go ahead and do a little bit of color sanding on this thing. Probably knock it down with a little bit of 2,500 grit, a little bit of 3,000, uh, nib out a couple spots. Uh, nibs are just dust particles that potentially land in the paint. Even though we're in a spray booth, Anything can come off your clothing, off your mask, off the air hose that touch the floor. It doesn't take much to get just one little speck in the clear coat, but it sands right down the machine buffet and it goes totally flat. Honestly, I couldn't have been any happier with how this thing came out. Very fun color to spray. Not an easy color to spray, but luckily it all worked out perfect. Blended out amazing. I couldn't be any happier. Definitely have to blend this color. It is not a 100% perfect match, so a blending is a must on this color. I think our customer's gonna be super, super pleased. So can't wait to get this thing unmasked and check her out. In the shop today, guys, we finally, 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 after getting sidetracked with the collision that happened on the Accord, um, we got that fixed, we got that out the shop, and we got the 56 Chevy out of the shop. Finally, we can finally get back to the fun stuff. So I'm super pumped. Uh, to bring this back in the shop now. If you guys go back quite a few videos ago or check the playlist section of our page, you guys will see that we have a couple videos already started on our new project. Now, this is the new project. I know, I know, it doesn't look like much right now. It's actually hideous right now, but we plan on making this something really cool. Now, this is something different. As far as I can see, this is nothing that has been done before or executed exactly how we want to do it. We've seen things that are very inspirational, um, we've seen exo cars, uh, replicas, we've seen body swaps, things that are close. Um, but basically, we're kind of taking little bits and pieces of different things that we've seen online and seen out there. We're kind of making our own creation, kind of making our own lane into what we're going to be doing here. So hope you guys enjoy this project. We do plan on moving this project along as fast as we can. Of course, we are doing customer repairs and stuff as well. So we can't just keep working on this, but we plan on at least giving you guys updates every couple of weeks at least hopefully weekly and uh, once we get going on it it'll definitely move a lot faster um, but we got it back in the shop we kind of have to reset ourselves and reanalyze where we're going to start how we're going to execute things what the whole plan is that way we can kind of start going for it today we are going to go ahead and get this thing up on the lift we're going to go ahead and install our wheel spacers now these are four lug two five lug so it is essentially a four by 100 wheel setup on this honda civic and we are gonna to go to five by 114.3. That way we have options for bigger wheels, a larger amount of wheels, and uh, really get ourselves something that can really replicate a supercar. Now we wanna potentially put some big wheels between 18, 19, and 20 inch wheels in the back, probably run a staggered setup, we'll probably try to squeeze some 18s up here. Now we do have to worry about our turning radius in the back, we'll probably be cutting off this rear wheel section. We'll be separating the seams right here. So this entire rear outer section will get removed, but we still have the inner wheel section as well that we are gonna try to maintain and keep that. So we're gonna try to see what we can potentially squeeze in here. We've got to keep the suspension, of course. You can see we've ditched the back section of the car where the trunk was. We've shortened it up a little bit. We still have the stock Civic seats for mock-up. So I guess where we're going to start with this thing, guys, is we're trying to get the stance down. So as soon as we kind of figure out the wheel size and the stance, 
we can order wheels and build around that. So first of all, we are gonna use, like I said, we're gonna install those spacers. Mikey's gonna bring over some wheels today, something big, so we can kind of see where we're at as far as fitment to kind of see, to give us a baseline of what we can potentially fit under this car. We don't wanna spend two, $3,000 on wheels and tires and then find out they don't fit. So we really gotta be careful, kind of figure out what we want, what offset we want and go from there. We have the windshield frame cut off the car. Now this windshield frame was right here. Now we cut it off because a Lamborghini Huracan has the windshield frame very far forward with a short stubby nose for the hood. We have the windshield frame right over almost dead center in the wheel. And it was about 12 inches that way, actually more. So we've moved that windshield frame about a foot forward. Now you can see it's just propped up there, right there with that creeper but we do plan on getting some steel tubing and that's kind of where we're gonna start. We're gonna try to find our home base for this windshield frame and we're gonna go ahead and start building an exo cage, essentially like a roll cage around this car. So we're gonna be um, mounting a roll bar cage. We'll probably go up and over here for safety and then we'll kind of put a support back into here, into our pillar there and we'll probably have some tabs. We actually want to mount our windshield frame with about six bolts at least so probably three tabs here maybe a couple in the center and probably three on the other side this will be slightly elevated we'll go ahead and get this to be a removable windshield so if we ever have to do any engine work or anything like that we can go ahead and put it in service mode we can unbolt our windshield frame and lift the whole glass and windshield frame out of the car simply and fast and get access to anything we may need uh brake booster master cylinder uh brake lines anything like that that we may need to get access to up front here we are going to do a spider so we plan on there being no roof we are going to do a hoop section here now we're probably going to do um two like hoops around each seat and probably one bar across straight to the floor we'll structure it just like a roll bar system and uh, we'll kind of build basically build off of that towards the back and then off the front we can kind of build off of that as well once we have our stance we can kind of start building a front bumper system we can kind of go our wheel arches up over that we do plan on doing some sort of vertical lift door system to give ourselves um, an exotic car look so our main goal is to get this thing low big wheels and get it wide we're gonna do something crazy with the exhaust. We are gonna panel some of the car. We don't want it looking like a big go-kart. We also don't want to see all this ugliness. So we do have to panel some of the car to hide and give this thing a look. But we do not plan on fully sealing this car, meaning that this car will not be something that parks outside, stays outside, gets driven in the rain. You can't go through an automatic car wash, nothing like that. The panels that we do mount on the thing will be painted some sort of exotic supercar color. So I'm working on that, so stay tuned. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what color you guys think we should do. We need something bright, we need something fun. So tell me what color you guys would do. We already have a Lamborghini Lime Green Del Sol, so we kind of want to avoid that color if we can. But tell me what color you guys would do. We kind of have a color in mind. It's definitely not on paper yet. We're not ready for any sort of paint at the moment. Uh, basically, essentially, once we're all done with the exoskeleton of the vehicle, We'll go ahead and get this thing sanded completely inside and out. Probably put this thing in a satin black finish. All the panels will be what's color matched and painted exotic. So tell me what you guys think in the comments. This is the build. I hope you guys can get excited about this. I'm going to try to keep the videos going as fast as possible. Of course, we got to get some parts ordered to really get going on this thing. Um, but we do have some spacers. We're going to try to mock up some bigger wheels today and see where we're at as far as size. That way we can kind of start searching for some wheels and click order. And as soon as we got something here, we're gonna get some steel tubing here. And uh, so we can start cutting and welding and fitting. And hopefully every week, every two weeks, we have some more progress done on this thing and keep this thing moving along to potentially see an end to this thing. We do plan on doing a K series engine. We are of course gonna keep the motor up front. I'd love to do a rear mounted engine, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, whether this thing's rear engine or front engine, this car is gonna look no different. Look of the car will make it appear like the engine's in the back. Here is an old K24. This is actually out of my old CRV. It does have a hole in the block. Cylinder head is still good potentially, but uh, we are gonna probably put a K24 engine in this. We'll probably do a mild turbo setup. Have some fun with this thing. We wanna do a turbo setup. We wanna get some flames coming out this thing. Nice deep sound out of this thing. Some good horsepower out of this thing. So stay tuned guys. Hope you guys appreciate all the videos. I appreciate all you guys for watching. Leave in comments. 
We love the support. We love the packages we're getting. We love the feedback we're getting in the comments. You guys are awesome, absolutely awesome. We really just enjoy that you guys are enjoying this video. It makes it all that much better. We're back in the shop. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update before I shut down and head home. We do have the 2017 Ford Focus RS assembled, detailed, and ready for pickup. Now this customer actually did some of his own work himself before bringing it to us. He just needed help with the body work and the paint. He does have to do a little bit of assembly when he gets home. He has his left and right hand wheel liners that go up inside the fenders and also like his window squirters and his little filler panels here as well. But for the most part, that will be really quick to pop on. He's got to stick his Ford emblem on, his RS emblem on. But man, this thing came out absolutely awesome. Cars look super aggressive. I'm sure these cars are super, super fun. You guys can see it came out absolutely awesome. We also fixed up the door jam as well. So that door jam has been refinished. These cars are beautiful. Got the Brembo big brakes there, rear discs. It's gotta be just a fun, fun car. Sport wing. You got the uh, factory Recaro seats. Beautiful car. Six-speed manual transmission. Just an awesome, awesome car. I'm just getting kind of set up for next week. We have a front bumper for the Toyota Sienna already in here. So we're just gonna have to wipe this thing down and uh, start mixing up paint. We'll go ahead and get this thing sprayed out. It's gotta be pearl white. Give you guys another little update on the project car. Here it is, guys. Mikey and I had some time yesterday we just started going to town with our ideas. Cut the suspension for now, just to get it low. So we just cut the coils out, got this thing sitting on the ground. You can see here how low she really is. Mikey had some extra wheels. He went ahead and mounted up on the tires that I had existing. We installed our two inch wheel spacers and we went from four lug to five by 114.3. It's hard to see, but I did have to notch the front brake caliper bracket you can see how close it is right there. We got about an eighth of an inch clearance and uh, it was fitting, but barely. So I went ahead and just took about an eighth of an inch to give us some clearance on that on both front brackets. We are rear drum in the back, so it doesn't affect anything back there. Unless we convert to rear disc, then we might have an issue. We might have to do the same thing that we did in the front. But overall, those adapters worked out perfect. You can see there, we got our windshield frame moved about a foot and a half forward. It used to be here. We cut it, move the whole windshield frame forward. We don't know if that's the final resting home. Trick was to get this thing low and to get it wide and get it sitting on some big wheels. I do believe we are gonna end up running a uh, 17 in the front. So this is a 17 and uh, we will be running a um, tire similar to this. We do gotta make sure that we can kind of turn and everything. And uh, being out, we do have some clearance issues here. We might have to modify this pinch weld a little bit, but uh, we need to kind of see where we're sitting at before we start constructing this thing. And look at this, guys. Look how wide the, that rear wheel. Now this is still a 17 inch wheel in the back. We will be running a 19. I thought maybe potentially a 20 inch wheel, but I think 20 is just gonna be overkill, guys. I think we're gonna run a 19, which will basically be a full inch bigger than this all the way around. And uh, we'll have a little less meat on the tire, so it'll kind of match what's going on up there and uh, probably not quite as wide. We're gonna have probably a between a 10 and an 11 inch wheel in the back. Um, width wise, in the front, we'll probably have just like a 17 by eight, 17 by eight and a half. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So we'll have just a little less meat on the tire because those are absolutely crazy. The rear of this thing is supposed to stick out a little bit more, but man, look at that guys. Super crazy. Went ahead and finished cutting out the rear tubs um we went to the factory pinch weld right there we went ahead and just got out we just got rid of the excess on the outside we got rid of the lower portion of the quarter panel um, we will probably have to readdress this section as well as this section we spent a few hours just modifying things and i do have some parts coming we did for order some full adjustable coilovers we got some control arms we got a tie bar for the back we have K-Series EG motor mounts, which will convert this chassis to accept a K-Series engine. Plan is that we are gonna be running a K24 engine with a K20 manual transmission, and uh, we ordered the conversion mounts to do that. I do have a K24 engine here 
Four mock-up, it does have a hole in the block. Um, the cylinder head is still good, um, but we are gonna use that motor for mock-up. So we'll probably, once we get the mounts, we'll go ahead and get that thing sat up in there because we know our engine's gonna come out a little bit and we need this car to slope as much as possible while leaving room for the radiator, the engine, the intake. We are gonna have to mock up a radiator, get the engine sitting in there at least for now so we can kind of start building this thing. Next week, we're probably gonna try to pick up some DOM steel and start constructing the main hoop for the roll bar system. We are gonna be installing and customizing a full roll bar system behind the seats. Now this is gonna be a Roadster, so we are gonna have no roof. We aren't gonna have any bars going up. So we also have to construct a roll bar system right here for the windshield frame that will also help hold and elevate this entire windshield frame exactly where we want it and also provide safety for the passenger compartment as well. I don't know if you guys can see it yet or not, but this thing is starting to look absolutely crazy. It's low and it's wide. Look at that. I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of an idea of kind of what we're going for. Now, these are just pictures for inspirational reasons. What we're trying to do really hasn't been done, and at least I haven't seen it. We've seen lots of exo cars, we've seen lots of body swaps, but what we're trying to do exactly, I haven't seen exactly yet, so we kind of got to get pretty creative here. But here is a Lamborghini that somebody's done. Beautiful car. You can see the exo skeleton cage that they kind of did up. Now, there's things I like about this, and there's things I don't like about this but we are just using it for inspiration. And here's a Lamborghini Huracan Roadster. We're gonna try to copy these exact lines, everything we can. The roll bar, we're gonna try to copy these lines. We're gonna try to get the front of the car. We're gonna try to capture that as much as possible. And we're just gonna have some fun with this, guys. I just wanted to show you guys kind of what we got thinking and going on. Of course, we've never done this before and there's nothing that's been done like this before, at least as far as I can see. So this is gonna be completely new and completely reinventing the wheel here. So, but right now, first step first was get the scene cut down and get it low and get it wide. And we did exactly that. Um, we'll probably shave this, shave this. We'll most likely shave the holes in the rocker panel. We'll have to address this to get covered and uh, we might have just a little more cleanup to do here. I do need to snap a straighter line to cut the back. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. This is not for everybody. You're gonna go ahead and sit in the car here. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but this thing looks absolutely crazy right now. You can see here, the windshield frame sits so far forward. It's so sleek. And look at those big rear wheels. So super pumped. I've been thinking of this for over a year and I'm finally excited to get this thing in here. And then we got kind of sidetracked. We had to fix the Honda, but we got the Honda finished. So we are back at it on this. So super pumped to give you guys some more content in the shop. And we are gonna start building this thing, guys. We left all the factory wiring from headlight to taillight, to the engine, to the dash. We are gonna be running no heater, no wipers. We will have a radio, headlights, taillights, turn signals, we're gonna take it to some car shows, have some fun with it, film some content, and of course, just bring something new to the table, guys. Bringing you guys along for the ride, for my crazy idea, Mikey seems to be on board, Teo seems to be on board, everybody seems to be on board, and this is gonna be a fun one for us, and definitely something custom, definitely one that we can be proud of, but tell me what you guys think. I just absolutely love the stance right now. So, as soon as we get some parts, We'll be throwing them on here and uh, starting to build some steel um, roll bars and uh, give you guys another update. But I hope you guys like the video. If you guys can, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the project. Am I crazy? What would you do? How would you do it? What color should we do? Let me know down in the comments. And if you guys haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Ooh, like LeBron, though, or like Bronzo. Ooh, I'm a baller, yeah, shot caller, yeah. They love me, you can't touch me, nah.